Thank you, Mark. Um, I'll be talking about crowdfunding, uh, which I think the previous speaker alluded to some projects that were, uh, some clients of his that were uh, raised money through crowdfunding. But I'm excited to be here because of my previous, um, I guess you could call career in the space industry. So this lanyard, I used to work for MBA, so it's bringing back memories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, Mark did a great job introducing um, Hivewire. I'll just go through some quick stuff. Uh, we've developed platforms for individuals or, uh, sorry, organizations that want to service their particular constituency. So we've raised through these platforms hundreds of thousands of dollars through for artists or social entrepreneurs, for example. Um, we do do consulting um, for whether it's corporate, nonprofit, government, et cetera, or individual campaigns that want to get um, to their target or success on crowdfunding platforms. In addition, we have a data analytics program, and we're proud of it because we have about uh, over 500,000 crowdfunding campaigns in our database, and we mine this for insights to understand the industry not just from an anecdotal perspective, but also from an empirical perspective as well. And I'll share a, a tiny bit of that data in this presentation. So to give you an example um, and to scope what crowdfunding, where crowdfunding is happening, Essentially, it's happening all over the world. So this is from our data set. Almost every single country has raised money for a particular project, um, for a local project in their particular country. Um, I think last year, the industry, the last the stats that came out were over $13 billion in the industry. And it's exponential growth. So we're more than actually doubling every year in terms of the total amount that's going through crowdfunding platforms every single year. And it's just going to get even bigger. I'll explain why in a second. Um, now, how many people have heard of crowdfunding before they came here? Okay, that's good. I always ask that because as the years progress, we've been in this about three years. Um, you know, three years ago, it was maybe one person, and now it's the majority. Let me ask another question. How many people have actually participated or are given to a crowdfunding campaign? Oh, that's great. That's half the people. Um, I, love to hear the, the stories and why you actually engage with those particular campaigns. I'm, I'm guessing they might be space, but you know, who knows. Um, so I won't go into the, uh, you understand crowdfunding, but I do want to overview the four different types of crowdfunding because it's important to scope up the discussion. Um, the first type, donation, is based on classical donation. You're giving to the Heart Stroke Foundation for a cause. That's great. Get a tax, re tax receipt. The next, next one is rewards-based crowdfunding which I'm, I'm assuming most of you are, when you put up your hands, you are participating in a rewards-based crowdfunding platform, so i.e. Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and there's hundreds of more all over the world, and you get a non-monetary return. The other two are really interesting, were equity or lending, and these uh, two types of crowdfunding is where you're actually getting an ownership of a company, so we're talking equity, or percent of return, you're loaning the money. Um, I'm going to focus on rewards-based crowdfunding because a lot has happened in that space, um, and we can learn a lot about it. At the end, I'll come back to equity and lending to see what's actually happening in North America. Because right now, it's effectively not legal to do this in North America because of securities regulation. But I'll get back to that uh, a little bit later. And there's two types. I'm sure you know all or nothing or keep what you raise. So if you get to your target uh, and all or nothing, then you get the money. Um, but if you don't, then you don't get any money. And it's used depending on the variables of the particular platform. Now. Obviously, the word funding is in crowdfunding, and that's what uh, brings most people, uh, the majority, to crowdfunding, but it's more than just about raising money. Uh, so the font is a little bit, the uh, resolution is a little uh, light on this PDF, but I'll just explain uh, the bullet points for the people in the back. So there's money in terms of what crowdfunding is about, but there's also market validation. Does the market want your product? So that's um, very true in a business to consumer sense, or whatever that may be, you want to prove that there is a customer out there that wants to buy your particular product. So um, that's a huge advantage of going through a crowdfunding mechanism. You're proving the appetite of the market. There's also promotion and brand exposure. Um, so the very act of running a crowdfunding campaign is that you're getting the name of your organization, your mission, uh, your company out there um, through uh, media outlets, et cetera, and that's a definite advantage, as well as testing marketing channels, or your target audience. Maybe you don't really know who your target audience is at the outset, and you should, every business organization should, um, but that's always a learning experience in terms of going into a new demographic, for example. And there's also connecting with a new audience. It brings new eyeballs to your campaign or your mission or organization, and you learn a lot about the people that are engaging with you. 
So you're collecting data, um, maybe not as much on a proprietary platform like any Google Kickstarter, um, but if you were doing your own on your own website, for example, which is called direct crowdfunding, you might learn a lot about the users that are actually engaging with you, why they're engaging, what are they saying on social media, etc. So this is what crowdfunding is about in terms of the reasons why people would want to go to crowdfunding. And money is just one small aspect. But now I'm going to tell you what crowdfunding is really about, more on the macro level, which is very important in terms of taking advantage of this mechanism. So in essence, it's about a value exchange. And the value exchange is between the entrepreneur, organization, institution, and the individual that lands on the crowdfunding page that gives you know, X amount of money for the cause or the mission or the product development or whatever it might be. Um, it's also about storytelling. Uh, people connect with people. And that's what brings people to actually have this sort of um, emotional change and, and they'll back the project because of maybe an emotional connection, maybe they're kindred spirits. Uh, there's a woman entrepreneur doing a project and a woman might be more, um, uh, more likely to back because of that connection. There's type, other, types, types, sorry, other types of touch points as well. Um, it's also a safe place for failure, which is really important because We've seen a lot of innovative um, output from crowdfunding campaigns across all industries. And the reason for that it is a safe place for failure. And without having a safe sort of grassroots level for people to fail, I have this amazing idea to send a, a mission to Alpha Centauri. Well, you know, that might fail. It's a, a silly example, but we have to allow people to fail. Um, that's the only way we're going to get innovation. And it's amazing what's coming out of, of, of these crowdfunding uh, platforms. And it's a safe place for failure also because it distributes the risk. So it's the same type of risk. So obviously, any entrepreneurial venture, which uh, utilizes crowdfunding a lot, there's a lot of risk involved. Nine out of 10 companies fail. When you look at the space industry, there's obviously a lot of risk as well. And you're allowed to distribute that risk amongst a lot of different people, which is a little bit different than what's been sort of done in the past. And the last thing is it's about participation, which is very important because it's people are participating on your journey. And that journey might be entrepreneurial, it might be a satellite, it might be strictly science, or it might be saving the whales, whatever it is, but they're participating on that journey. And if you can design uh, your crowdfunding campaign or your strategy to allow them par to participate, then you're more likely to, to reach success. So um, uh, I'll throw out some examples as I'm speaking. This is an example of I think it was Kickstarter uh, from the United Kingdom. It's a lunar mission, it's a science mission. And um, they were raising, I think their goal was somewhere in the hundreds of thousands of pounds. They raised about a million dollars Canadian after the currency exchange. And they were doing a lunar mission. And remember I said about the participation factor? One of the rewards they gave back to people was that they gave them an opportunity to upload some digital files, um, which they, which when, if the mission was successful after multiple steps of raising millions of dollars and getting to the moon after multiple years, they would put a little digital time capsule in the, in, on the surface or below the surface of the moon. So they'll conduct, the mission will conduct some science and they'll leave a little digital time capsule so a part of you will be on the moon. And that's an, a creative way by which you can allow a broader spectrum of people to participate on your journey, a purely scientific based journey, and you get their support as well. Plus, they added PR and the marketing associated with the crowdfunding campaign and the other things that are associated with it. This is another example, um, a local example. University, uh, sorry, a high school in Toronto. They raised just over eleven thousand dollars, and the purpose was just to get their class um, participating in the space station uh, experimental experiment program for high school students. So um, again, a small raise, but very significant from, from the standpoint of education, giving these students an opportunity to actually uh, do something. And the rewards they gave back were like mugs and t-shirts and autographed pictures of Chris Hadfield that they acquired and things like that. The, so it's not easy to be successful, and I'll show you some stats a little bit later on, but these crowdfunding campaigns that you hear about, they're all the successful ones and the big money raises, et cetera. And there's usually four critical factors of success that's associated with the crowdfunding campaign. The first one is, obviously you have to have a good idea and you have to communicate it well. And those two are equally important. Uh, no one's gonna back uh, something ridiculous. Um, I have an example in the appendix if we have time about that. And uh, no one's gonna back, back a campaign that the person doesn't communicate well. The attention span of people on the internet it are, it is tiny and it's decreasing. Um, I read a study actually that was 
uh, it's approaching an attention span of a goldfish, a human, which is <laughs> kind of hilarious. Um, I don't know what that means about us, but um, you, you have a small attention span for the people that are coming to your campaign. It, it's work enough to get them there, and that's where the marketing comes into play, but then to get them to back you, you have to grab them right away. That's why storytelling is important. That's why you have to appeal to their emotional connection, their passion for space, for example. And that's a, that's a point where um, I guess the space industry has a little bit of advantage because people dream about this, at least a certain demographic, a large demographic. Um, the strength of your network is important, so it's much easier to raise money when you already have an established brand network or access to a network. Um, that, as well as marketing, are the two most underestimated components of being a successful campaign. If you build it and they will come, it doesn't work like that. It's if you build it and you work your behind off, sweating it out 12 hours a day, then they might come and then they might back you. The last thing um, touches upon one of those macro trends that I explained is value exchange. Um, some of, people want to get something back and it might be tangible and it might be intangible. I'll give you a couple examples after this as well, but they want value in return for what they're giving you. And it's usually determined by the price range. So they give you more money, they want more value. And there's a lot of opportunity to have unique, creative value that you can give back um, just on a rewards-based level. These, it's hard to read from the back, so um, these are characteristics of a, uh, sorry, uh, data analysis, some data that we got from an infographic collaboration with Shopify um, for successful campaigns. So I'm just gonna highlight a couple of them. Average number of reward levels is nine. These are for successful campaigns. The average length of a campaign is 35 days. So as you go longer, the success rate drops off. Um, and two other points I want to highlight from this slide is that the average, uh, oh, sorry, the average amount pledged to a campaign is about $87. So if you take the total divided by the number of backers of a particular campaign, it's under $100. And the most popular reward, reward level, so you can back at different levels, and each level you'll get a certain reward, is $25. So you have an average, or the most popular reward is at $25 level, that's like lunch, um, or really expensive coffee at Starbucks. And then you have an average of $87. So how would uh, this service the space industry? Um, and of course, the power is in the aggregation. And the next example is case in point. They, the average pledge was about $86, and the most popular reward was $25. And maybe some of you have heard about it. The ARCID Space Telescope, it was uh, raised um, $1.5 million on Kickstarter. And this is a very participatory telescope. Um, again, one of the key factors of success in crowdfunding, if you allow the people to participate on your journey, you'll get much more uptake in lots of different ways, whether it's people backing, people talking about you, uh, press and media, etc. So the creative value that they gave back to the people backing was a space selfie. So essentially, the telescope has a little screen on it. Um, you can upload your picture, and there's a camera and what the telescope will do is it'll, it'll point the camera towards the Earth, and the screen will be in the foreground, and so it'll, uh, it'll load an image of you or whatever image you upload, so you can be there with the Earth in the background, and it's a space selfie, and that was given for $25, and I can't remember exactly how many, but tens of thousands of people wanted a space selfie. Oh, there you go, gentlemen right there, and we sure will have a space selfie um, <laughs> soon enough. At two people, anybody else, space selfie? Okay, there you go. So. <laughs> Yeah, I missed out on it, unfortunately, but um, I'm glad you guys got a hold of it. Uh, so why are people actually backing? Uh, so they're backing for different reasons, and there's a whole spectrum of reasons. One, I remember that value exchange portion of it, there's cool rewards. So space selfie is definitely a reward that's high on the list. There's a couple other campaigns that have just launched, actually, that are doing kind of similar thing. Um, shared passion, and I think that's an advantage of the space industry. Because maybe you're just doing a drive train for a rover on Mars, but it's on Mars. That completely changes everything. And if you creatively design your campaign in a way that gives some sort of value and participatory participation to uh, the public, then you can raise significant uh, amount of, of funding. Um, it could be solidarity participation, um, part of a movement or collective goal, uh, research the atmosphere, greenhouse gases, etc. Uh, kindred spirits, you know, you're from the same country that this entrepreneur wants to launch a satellite from, etc. Or it could just be pure entertainment. Um, and that's valid as well because uh, some of these crowdfunding campaigns, anyone hear about the potato salad campaign? 
Okay, a couple nods. Someone raised, uh, they were, wanted to raise like $10 on Kickstarter just to make a potato salad. And the reward was, I will say your name while I'm making the salad. If you give like $10 or whatever it was. He ended up raising, uh, I can't remember exactly how much it was, but tens of thousands of dollars. And now has a potato festival and all this kind of thing. That's just pure entertainment, right? And for $10, I think someone can be entertained and actually uh, to give to a, that particular campaign. Um, the key thing about uh, why people backing you, backing you is that you have to know the target audience, know your particular target audience. And that's a difficult thing for any business uh, as you evolve and grow. Um, some stats, uh, we hear about the million dollar campaigns. Those are the ones that make the news real. However, um, the majority are fairly small. Again, rewards-based crowdfunding. 88% of crowdfunding campaigns in the world raise less than $20,000. The median is actually $4,000. So uh, a lot's happening in the low end, and there's some spikes on the high end as well. Um, this is a success rate, so it's hard to read. This is particularly on Kickstarter. So if you're raising under $1,000, your success rate is 61%. Um, if you're raising over a million, it's 4.5% success rate. And then there's uh, success rates in between. Now, this is one of the more uh, successful crowdfunding platforms. So they're not, it's not easy to raise, but it maybe is better than other forms of funding, grants, et cetera. Um, so there's definitely opportunity if you design your campaign well. Um, how many people have heard of Light Sale? I think actually there was a newsletter that Mark sent out. Yeah, Light Sale. So um, idea, idea from, I think, originally Carl Sagan is you have this sale on a, this is a CubeSat, and it rides a, a quote-unquote wind of uh, uh, photons from the sun to get to your destination. Uh, fairly efficient means of uh, propulsion. It's headed by the Planetary Society, uh, and Bill Nye is prominent. I think he's the CEO now, and he's in the video. And obviously, he has a strong following. He has a strong network, and they've done a great job marketing this. They raised their goal of 200,000 within 24 hours. This is a screenshot a couple of days ago, so it's probably higher than this. Um, so this is an idea of something that a uh, passion of people exploration of space has been talked about a lot, a strong network, great marketing, and an example of reward is that they were giving at one reward level, I can't remember the, the monetary value of the reward level, they were giving, uh, think, I think, a centimeter square piece of the actual light sale, the material, which is great because it allows someone to participate in, like, this is a piece of a sale that will be in space. Um, and allows individuals to participate and get some value in exchange for giving, you know, X amount of dollars. 90% of all backings on crowdfunding campaigns happen under $100. Um, it's the aggregation that makes it um, important or su successful. So I, I want, we talked about rewards-based crowdfunding. You're only getting a monetary return back. Um, and there's another type of crowdfunding. And it's, very, it's been effectively not allowed in North America because of securities regulation. Uh, it's more complicated because in Canada, securities are regulated provincially. So to invest in a company, uh, you have to be an accredited investor, which essentially means a high net worth individual, have income over $250,000, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the reason these rules were written in the 1930s is very stringent, and the regulator has a challenge to create a fair and efficient market balanced with um, protecting the public. So uh, in other parts of the world, it's, the rules are a little bit different or more, I guess, relaxed, and equity uh, crowdfunding has been happening in different markets. And it's been very successful. I'll give you an example of that in a second. But in North America, uh, the rules are just about to change. And in fact, in, on, in Canada, six provinces recently created rules, so an exemption in securities regulation to allow uh, an issuer or a company to raise funds from the average uh, person on the street. And the, they're li a bit limited in these, in these provinces, like uh, British Columbia, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Quebec, et cetera. You, can only, you are limited to raise 500000 annually and an investor can only raise up to $1,500. Sorry, an investor can only invest up to $1,500 in a particular um, raise. In Ontario, uh, the Ontario regulator, the OSC, um, we hope that they'll be releasing rules at the end of this year, and their raise limits are a bit more appropriate, uh, although limited as well. The raise limit for an issuer, company raising money, is $1.5 million, and for an investor, it's uh, $2,500 per investment. But so things are happening in the states. They have a Jobs Act um, that it's been delayed for various reasons, and hopefully it's going to come to fruition. So equity and lending crowdfunding opens up a whole new possibility of raising money from the crowd, shareholders that are passionate for what you're doing or your missions um, that you're working on um, and are willing to invest 
for different reasons, not just making money, but because they love uh, the industry. An example uh, is Crowdcube. So this is a, out of the UK. They've been around for about four years. And the average uh, funding on equity-based crowdfunding, so they're selling shares, is, uh, well, here it's 230,000 pounds, which is about 460, give or take, thousand dollars Canadian. Um, it ranges from a few thousand dollars to millions of dollars in terms of raises. And the average that someone invests, an investor going on, a regular person to invest on this platform in the UK is about over $4,000 Canadian when you do the currency exchange. Um, so it's actually, uh, the, the rules that we have are a little bit limited, uh, but at least it's a start and hopefully they'll increase as we go forward. Um, this platform has raised over $80 million, varied industries from tech to uh, breweries to fashion. Um, Top three investment reasons are they want to make money, but they enjoy investing in small business and they want to take an active part in some way. And most people only have one investment. Uh, they're not a, a significant um, regular investor. And the demographic's different. The demographic here, the majority of people on this platform are in the 18 to 48 years old range, which is a different dem demographic from traditional sort of uh, investors when you look at cre accredited investors in, in North America. So, the point being that a lot has happened in rewards-based crowdfunding for uh, various reasons, and I'm trying to outlay, uh, outline those different reasons so that someone um, in the audience might want to take advantage of that. But there's still more to come and more opportunity in terms of raising even more and more significant uh, rounds of funding. And you can think of crowdfunding as both an alternative and a complement to your particular uh, to your ventures, organizations, projects, etc. So thank you for your time, and I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Questions? Um, so I've been involved in, in advising a couple of small Kickstarters in Georgia. Georgia does have equity uh, uh, crowdfunding uh, rules as just one state out of, I think, only two in the U.S. do it. Um, there's a fair number of, of crowdfunding companies that help uh, larger um, raises get through the initial hump of making sure you get it up. I think the number was, if you get one third of your money by a particular point, then you usually get all the stuff with the momentum built up. Um, are those becoming more popular, or are people starting to figure out how to manage that on their own within getting crowdfunding campaigns? Or are you really seeing in the marketplace, don't do it on your own, go find somebody to help you actually ensure that your crowdfunding project is going to be successful? Um, there, there's a whole, it's the wild, wild west right now in terms of crowdfunding. So there's tons of people that um, say they're crowdfunding experts. We call ourselves crowdfunding experts out there. And there's probably like anything a spectrum of people that know what they're talking about and that don't know what they're talking about. So the statistic that you were alluding to was that if you reach between 20 and 40% of your crowdfunding raise, your target, in the first sort of few days, then you are, I think it's 89% likely to reach your target. And there's a question of cause and effect there as well, right? So you have reached a good momentum at the very start, and it's not necessarily because it's just, you're, you're playing with, uh, you're, you're playing the game of PR and marketing, it's because you have something there. And so just to get to that 30%, like you could just get a bunch of friends together and get to your 30% of funding, that doesn't mean you're gonna get to your raise. Um, but I would suggest that if you're raising significant amounts of money, like uh, 20, 50 in the six digits, that it's worth your while from an economic perspective to find someone that has experience in this space and to ask them um, what experience they have and how they can help you. Because it's not just strategies, it's tips, it's best practice, it's uh, um, planning, uh, execution, what happens afterwards, how do you nurture relationships. There's a lot involved in a crowdfunding campaign. And the most underestimated component is the time component. Every, whatever you're thinking it's going to take you, multiply by two. That's what my um, colleague used to tell me at MDA. Everything, if the analysis is going to take two weeks, tell them four weeks. <laughs> so um, help on a campaign that's raising tens of thousands to hundred thousand dollars, it just makes economic sense. Economic sense. Uh, yeah, in this front there was a question. Yeah, just to uh, you know, uh, I'm in the early stages uh, with uh, I've got to sign my day job the next quarter, but uh, uh, I've been working this venture for a couple of years, and we are going to have our patent uh, in probably by the end of the year. So we're starting to look at the campaign now. 
And I note on the, the, the thing about the SEC ruling, I think there are up to $50 million that you can raise if, if, you, if anybody is so lucky. Yeah, so those, those rules go into effect in a couple of months as well. Yeah, uh, I hope so. I hope so. Um, there's been delays. They've been trying to get out the last two years and stuff, so I hope it actually is coming out. Um, there's always been delays. And um, oh, just a comment on a question. Well, yeah, I was just uh, adding some information in there. Okay. Thanks. One more question. One or two million is, is good for an awful lot of things, but there are projects that cost more. Do you see a point coming in the future where it is possible to raise 10, 20 million on, on a crowdfunding campaign, and if so, what has to change to get us to those levels? Yeah, definitely possible right now. The record for crowdfunding, I, I can't remember the exact number right now because it keeps going. It's a video game called Star Citizen. It's this massive multiplayer video game. It started on Kickstarter, and then they, then they did crowdfunding on their own website because they don't need Kickstarter, they already have the following. It's called direct crowdfunding if you choose that way. They're up to 70 something million dollars. And what they're giving back is they're giving back value in, inside the game. And there's tons of other examples that have raised over $10 million. A cooler raised $13 million. The Pebble Watch raised 20 something million dollars, et cetera. Um, so we're already at that level. I guess we're at the peak, you know, and, and so it's going to start increasing. But you remember that the important thing is that crowdfunding is not just an alternative, it's a complement. So the, the light sale project, Bill Nye Planter Society, they were just wanting to get $200,000 and they had some stretch goals, but that was just a, one component of their mission, uh, of their overall budget for the mission. Um, and they got, in addition to the money, they got a lot of press, uh, probably some partnerships. There's a lot that comes with crowdfunding. So from a complement perspective, excellent. Um, from just wholly crowdfunding your whole venture. Um, for space, we're getting there, but there has been examples that have been raising tens of millions of dollars. And once equity changes, once equity comes into effect, we'll see, uh, who knows what we'll see, but we're forecasting very large numbers. Thank you.